Hi guys, how is your day today? I hope it's good, and the weekend is just around the corner. I have some new stories for you today with some of my insights. The first one is about a mom who stole makeup from her daughter. How shameful is that? Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I've never really had good makeup. I usually get by with the cheap dollar store stuff, but I've never really had anything good. I mentioned it once to my boyfriend of five months, not because I expected him to do anything about it. I was just talking in general. My sweetheart of a boyfriend remembered that, and a few days ago, he randomly handed me a box with an absolutely amazing makeup set in it. It retails for something like $300, and I almost didn't want to take it because it seemed like too much. But my boyfriend just seemed happy I liked it and convinced me to take it. I got to try it twice. The day I got it, I tore into it as soon as I got home and tried some looks. I got to wear it one other time last weekend when I went on a date with the boyfriend and I got all dolled up for it. I intended to wear it last night for the same reason. But when I went into the bathroom and opened the cabinet, my makeup set was gone. At first, I immediately called my sister since we share the bathroom and I asked her where she put my makeup, but she told me she didn't touch it. After searching all over, I still couldn't find it and asked my mom if she had seen a makeup set. She immediately told me she found one in my bathroom and took it back to hers. I asked why she took my makeup set and she looked confused and told me it was hers. I tried to tell her, no, it was mine. Brian bought it for me. But mom shook her head and said something like, no 17 year old boy is buying something like that. It must be mine. I was getting upset and told her it was definitely 100% mine and my boyfriend gave it to me. But mom just told me that whether it was or wasn't doesn't matter because I don't need it. She ignored me the rest of the night until she went to work. I tried going to get it myself, but she left the door locked. Finally today, after I woke up, I went downstairs and almost lost it because I'm about 99% sure she was wearing some of my makeup. And I told her again, I want it back. She told me to drop it and she doesn't want to hear about it again. I called my boyfriend to see if he had a receipt or something and he was super mad when I told him what happened and he offered to come over and get it back. But I told him it wasn't a good idea to get in an argument now. So he is looking for a receipt to see if it helps. What do I do? I want my makeup back. It's the first decent set I've had and it was a gift from someone I love. I swear my mom knows I'm telling the truth but just isn't budging for some reason. If she wanted to wear some, I would have shared if she just asked. Why did she have to take it? I have absolutely no doubt that mother knows that makeup is OP's. It is not normal stealing from your daughter. I think in this case, boyfriend's parents need to call OP's mom and explain that their son bought the makeup for OP. What do you think, guys? My husband, 32 male, myself, and our son, 9 months, recently moved back to our home state, to a small rural town close to his parents. We are doing good. My husband got a job with great hours and pay. We are renting a decent house for cheap. His parents have been incredibly helpful, with buying us a washer and dryer, bringing us groceries. We didn't ask for it, but we appreciate it nonetheless. But they will not stop sending me job recommendations, daily. At first, I took it as them being helpful. Now, they are getting pushy and judgy. I ignore their messages now, but they still keep sending me links to places that are hiring and forwarding other opportunities to me. We are financially stable and happy. Our current situation works like this. Husband wakes up at 4 a.m., goes to work. I get up with the baby around 5 or 6, take care of him, and do literally everything else except bring in an income. I clean, I cook, I handle the budget, home repairs, phone calls, paperwork, appointments. I do everything house and family related, everything. And I get up with our son every two hours, every night, because he still doesn't sleep through. My husband comes home around four and plays with the baby while I do laundry and cook or do anything that didn't get done earlier. We are both happy with our lifestyle, for now. He sat me down recently and told me himself that he'd rather I wait to start working because we don't need the extra income right now. And if I work, it'll add an extra load of stress to both of us. If we work opposite shifts, 
we will never see each other, and neither of us will ever sleep or rest. Same shift, we will need to figure out babysitting and transportation. At the very least, he wants me to wait till the baby is sleeping more. I'd love to start working again, and if I needed a job, I'd have one instantly with my resume and experience. But this is what is working for us, for right now. As I said, at first, I just thought his parents were trying to help. Until recently. My son had an appointment several days ago, and I let mother-in-law know I took the bus to bring him. She got agitated with me and claimed that I should have taken my husband to work so that I'd have the vehicle, because she had to do the same thing when her youngest was a baby and they only had one car. She felt I was lazy by taking the bus. I explained to her that I wasn't going to drag the baby out of bed at 4 a.m., drive my husband 30 minutes to work, drive back, drive 30 minutes to son's appointment, drive back, and then go pick up my husband. The bus is only a dollar. After that interaction and a couple more, I've gradually come to realize that they are being judgmental of me and seem to think I sit on my ass all day while my husband works to provide for us. It's a crappy feeling that they see it that way. With every job opportunity they send my way, I feel more and more bitter and have no clue how to tell them nicely to shove off. Even my husband is starting to get pissed at their persistence. The bills are paid, the fridge is full, and we are all happy. We can even afford to have a bit of extra fun every other weekend. This isn't going to be the arrangement forever, and I will go back to work and school after some time. But I get to spend every day with my son. My husband gets to come home to a clean house and relax. We are lucky to be in this position, but his parents want us to do things differently and struggle the same as they did. I don't want to be mean to them. I just want them to stay out of our business and stop sending me job recommendations and tagging me in now hiring posts on Facebook every single day. They are good people otherwise, and I love how involved they are in our son's life. The last thing I want is to add tension between us. To be honest, guys, I don't understand why the husband just doesn't talk to his parents and explain the situation. It's obvious that OP's in-laws think she's lazy. But did she ever tell them what she told us in the post? That they are happy like that and that she is not planning on working at the moment. They just need to sit down and talk. It looks like a lot of miscommunication to me. I have been writing novels ever since I received a cheap laptop for Christmas when I was 11. I love writing and everyone who reads my stories enjoys them. So far, I have written one particular story around five times. 90,000 words each time. Every time I finished, I would end up starting from the beginning as my writing would improve so much. I would be cringing as I began proofreading from the start. Aside from that story, I've been writing about three other novels on the side and entered three writing competitions and won first place with two of them. The latest writing competition, I was 18 when I won. I was congratulated personally by the head judge who encouraged me to start publishing my stories. I remember him telling me I had something special and I could definitely make a career out of this. I cried when I got home as I'd never received this kind of encouragement from my family. My sister, on the other hand, has never written a book. When she was around seven, she would handwrite stories in a notebook, which my parents would enjoy reading. They showed one of the stories to her teacher and her teacher found it cute. As she grew up, she lost interest in writing and hasn't written anything since. Yet my parents are still so focused on the story she wrote when she was little and are convinced she will become the next best-selling author. Recently, I started publishing my work on Amazon. I've only published one book so far, but it's doing really, really well. I've just finished the second and it's due to go live today. At the moment, I am studying at university and it looks like I'll be able to quit my part-time job as writing will earn me more. I told my parents how well it's doing but they seem very disinterested. They told me that I should be giving advice to my sister and encouraging her to write. Last time I visited my parents' house, my dad asked me how my book is doing. I had just begun to explain about how many people had read it before my mom cut me off and asked my sister if she was writing anything. My sister texted me this morning, showing me some screenshots from my mom. It went something like this. Mom, why aren't you publishing your stories online? Sister, I don't write stories. Mom, you should. If your sister is making some money, then you certainly can. Seeing that message really hurt my feelings. 
After all these years, my mom is still convinced that my sister is a better writer than myself. My sister hasn't written anything since she was eight, but my parents are still convinced she'll be an author, as her English teacher once commented that her creative writing is very good. I hate this so much. I wish they would just be proud of me for what I'm doing. Instead, they're telling me to encourage my sister to write, despite her having no interest in becoming an author. I think OP should try to ignore her parents and focus on what she is doing. I can imagine how painful it is to have no support from her parents while they are encouraging the sister. I think OP should talk to her mother and explain how she feels. Explain that she hasn't received any sense that they're proud of her. That OP doesn't want to be giving writing advice to her sister because she is not interested in writing at all. That her comparing sisters and OP's talents is unfair and hurtful. If she doesn't understand these issues, then I think there's no relationship left at all. Due to COVID, there's no telling when our engagement party or wedding will even take place. But I did ask my girlfriend of three years to marry me last month. We had been discussing marriage for a long time before that and had decided that we were ready to take that next step together. She's a kind and level-headed person. Smart, funny, beautiful, etc. I can honestly say I knew within the first few months of dating her that we had a potential for something really great. Although most people have been supportive of our relationship, one person hasn't. Her best friend of about 20 years, Rachel. They met in high school and still seem to have that sort of group dynamic. My girlfriend is the quieter and nicer one, and Rachel is the leader, but mostly just a miserable bee. I didn't quite realize how bad it was until a year into the relationship when Rachel had manipulated my girlfriend into leaving a date and heading over for a crying session after a remarkably bad day at the law office. Rachel is a lawyer, for context. My girlfriend tried to explain that she would come over after the date, but Rachel just exploded at her on the phone and started shouting and crying until my girlfriend dropped everything and went over. I gave her a ride to Rachel's apartment. Rachel was happy to see that I had driven my girlfriend there. Although I didn't come in, I did walk my girlfriend to the door, as it was dark out, and I noticed within seconds that Rachel looked completely okay. No signs of distress, no tears, etc. Even my girlfriend was confused by that, and she's usually not one to question people when they say they need help. Basically, Rachel called her over for no reason. She probably did have a bad day at work, but had kicked it up a few good notches on the phone after my girlfriend had initially said we were busy. When I came back to pick my girlfriend up afterwards, she sat in the car in silence for a few seconds and then just said something along the lines of, that was weird. She seemed okay and pretty much just wanted to speak about what to wear to friend A's dinner party next weekend. From what I've observed, Rachel seems to be used to having my girlfriend in the palm of her hand. I'm not one to tell my significant other who they should be friends with, but Rachel has proved to be manipulative and have the worst intentions whenever there's a decision to be made. She talks down to people about the types of clothes they wear, the amount of money they make, the university they had attended, etc. The few times that I have hinted at my opinion of Rachel to my girlfriend, she kind of agrees that Rachel is a bit mean at times, but that she stands by her and feels that she's a good person at heart. I have yet to see proof of that last part. In any case, my girlfriend is her own person and can decide who she wants in her life. So I haven't said outright that I would prefer we don't associate with Rachel and the bad energy that she brings around whenever we see her at group events or wherever else. But a couple of days ago, my girlfriend was in a group video call with Rachel and a few of their other friends, and some things were said. Rachel said right away that my girlfriend looked like Hitler, due to a bit of smudged eyeliner, and then later went in on her clothes, saying that my girlfriend should really stop buying cheap crap even though all of her clothes are from Aritzia, Plenty, etc., which are a far cry from cheap, and also kept pointing out the fact that my girlfriend's dark circles were especially dark that day, even though they weren't. I could hear all of this from the living room. Although it was pretty crappy, it was infuriating for me having to hear Rachel speak to my girlfriend like that in such a casual and unthinking manner. My girlfriend is about as non-confrontational as they come and does choose to laugh it off when Rachel talks to her in that way, but also carries it afterward. I've seen her cry after hangouts with Rachel multiple times. She never admits that it's because Rachel was crappy to her, but it's so obvious. 
When I'm around, I do make a point to stand up for my girlfriend in a calm and non-dramatic manner, which I guess is something. But it's past the point of not wanting to make waves now. Sometimes I feel bad for Rachel, because she must really be miserable with her own existence to have to constantly talk down to other people in the way that she does. But I really do want to say something now. Not to her, but to my girlfriend. She deserves better than a friend who talks to her like that. I can only imagine what horrible stuff Rachel would say or do at our engagement party or wedding. I guess in a way, I want to start this discussion now because we're going to be entering a new chapter together, which is always a good opportunity to decide what and who is really important. I want my girlfriend to be able to hang out with her friends without feeling like crap for days afterwards. She's so much more than whatever role Rachel has given her and maintained since high school. How do I communicate that without coming across like I know better? Thoughts? I think OP's girlfriend is in an abusive and manipulative relationship with her friend. I would definitely not want that girl at my engagement party or wedding. I think OP needs to try and open his fiancé's eyes about Rachel. But ultimately, OP's fiancé has to be the one to decide that Rachel isn't a good friend for her. I think the more OP pushes his fiancé to see what he sees, the more cannon fodder he will give Rachel. So, in my opinion, OP can't push it. Instead, just gently get fiancé thinking about how Rachel treats her and if that's what she wants.